Hey guys, so we are on site in Taylor, Michigan here at a retail location and what we have going on is back in June this building was uh, remodeled essentially for this retail location and four new carrier units were installed. Now during the remodel or some part of that process the gas was shut off so when the temperature started dropping they realized that they had no heat. So we came out here and found that the gas was shut off and then we had to have the gas company come back on, turn the gas on, right? So I am here today to basically bleed off the lines, start up each one of the units, and burn off the heat exchangers because those heat exchangers uh, from the factory, they have just a, a film of oil or some sort of packing oil that's on there or something that protects it from rust in case they're sitting in storage for a long period of time. So that's what I was doing today. Now, that one way back there, up on the, the little ledge, I got that one done, I got that one done, and I got this one done. However, this one I noticed, when I went to burn off the heat exchanger, it didn't have any power. So I went downstairs and I found it had a trip breaker. No big deal. So I reset it, came back up here, per, turned the disconnect back on, and as I was just going through my checks, I happened to push in the contactor for what I believe is our first stage compressor, that one right there. And as soon as I did that, it tripped. So I need to investigate why that tripped. Now the first thing I'm gonna do, since I'm 90% sure this compressor is our issue, um, like I said, because I pushed in the contactor with my screwdriver and it immediately tripped, and also because of this uh, burn mark on there too, and I have power restored back at the breaker downstairs. My disconnect is off. So I'm going to very carefully remove this Molex plug. Um, you want to be careful when you do something like this because even though this is a newer unit, one of these pins could be compromised. And when I pull this off, it could blow the entire charge. So we want to be careful. I hope that doesn't happen. But if it does, it'll be on camera. There we go. All right, so now we are gonna check that to ground. Chances are it's shorted out. But let's just see. All right, I got one lead jammed into my ground connector and my other lead, we are gonna test our terminals. Yeah, we do have some resistance there. Some resistance there. We got a direct short right there. Hmm. And we have a lot of resistance to ground, so um, we are definitely shorted out on this compressor. Now, I believe I know why, and I'll show you here in just a second. Let's turn this back on. All right, my blower's on. Let's go over here to the blower real quick. There's no air coming out of this. I feel some air moving, but with this blower on and my heat exchanger panel removed, it should just be blasting me with air right now. And it's not. So, the other thing is, now listen real close. That compressor sounds like garbage. So our blower wheel is not spinning in the right direction and our compressor sounds like garbage because they have the phase rotation mixed up. And what I'm assuming is that compressor, being the first stage compressor, probably ran for the last, I don't know, two, three months before we started hitting the colder seasons because this remodel happened about late June, early July. And um, 
Yeah, so it's probably been running with improper phase rotation for the last two, three months until it finally destroyed itself. So now what we got to do is correct that phase rotation. Turn that back off. I'm going to open up that disconnect and then we will swap to the lines and then verify that we have uh, proper phase rotation after that. So here's our disconnect and to reverse rotation on any of these three phase units, which by the way, let's go double check to make sure it is actually three phase, which I know it is right there, 208, 230, three phase. So all you need to do is swap any of the two lines. Now I'm not going to try to swap these because it's in a tight spot and it looks kind of hard to get to. Instead, I'm going to swap these two right here. Make it a little bit easier on me. So let me set the camera down and set that up real quick. As you can tell, I got those two lines switched around. So my phase should be um, in the proper rotation now. And what I also did is I disconnected the uh, voltage that powers up this contactor that goes to the compressor that's shorted out. I also removed this and just kind of taped it up out of the way for now. Um, I'm not sure if they'll give us this job or if they'll have the company that installed these units because we didn't set these or commission these units. This was done by a different contractor, maybe a general contractor, I don't know, uh, but they didn't properly commission these. So let's power this on and see if we have proper rotation. It's going to take it a minute before it actually kicks into blower mode here, so be patient. Oh, it's a lot faster than I thought. So now we come over here, and you can probably hear the no you can just hear the difference now. We obviously have wind or air blowing directly at us like we should. Let's go back over here. I have to excuse the sirens in the background. Let's see if we can hear our compressor now. Now you hear that? A lot smoother. All right. Now that the sirens have passed, like I was saying a second ago, you hear that compressor operation? Much, much smoother. So now that we have proper blower rotation, we're just waiting for our heat to kick on. Then we can burn the oil off that heat exchanger and we will be all set. Now, this is a good example of what my buddy Chris Stevens over at HVACR Videos always says, big picture diagnosis. So I was sent here to do one thing, which was just to simply bleed off the gas or bleed the air out of the gas lines, turn the gas on, and then fire the units up. And in doing so, unit number two here, I found it had a trip breaker and further investigation revealed that it has a uh, shorted compressor. So it pays to be observant guys and to go that extra mile. You know, some guys might have maybe wrote that down and said, hey, we need a quote to come back to further diagnose. But in this particular situation, I was able to just diagnose it real quick while I'm on site. Um, you know, making it much more convenient to my customer. Anyway, guys, that does it for now. I'm going to get back to doing what I was originally sent here to do, which is get this unit fired up in heat mode, burn off that heat exchanger, and I'm going to get out of here, all right? Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Leave me some feedback, some comments. Shoot me an email if you want. Follow me on Instagram or Facebook, whatever you want to do, all right? But for now... Take care, guys. I'll see you on the next one.